Yo, this is the Scar City Studios YouTube channel. Please don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe. And our sponsors are for Claims and Hire Birmingham, the leading and best accident management company. Get a replacement car anywhere. I really appreciate you joining me today and this story comes from Exeter. As the UK eases out of lockdown and everybody's going to the pub today, I think this is a big reminder of the safety measures you should take. If you do have too much alcohol and you're making your way home, please be sure that your friends do get home safely when you do leave these venues and do not leave anybody on their own because nowadays you can't be too sure. This footage released by the police today shows the last moments of Lorraine Cox's life as she was stalked through the city centre by her soon-to-be killer, Azam Magori. He followed her like a predator does prey for over a mile through the city centre leading onto the high street. This is where he started a conversation with her and managed to talk her into coming back to his home with the promise of drugs and drink. Lorraine Cox was clearly going through some issues in her life that she needed to deal with and Azam took complete advantage of her that night. This story first broke when the 32-year-old went missing in the early hours of September the 1st last year. A murder probe was launched a week after, and they arrested a man who they named initially as Christopher Mayer, a 22-year-old, but then it was later determined that his name is Azam. Police have now confirmed Lorraine's body was found in Exeter, and a statement by Devon and Cornwall Police said the formal identification will now take place in connection to the suspected murder of a woman from Exeter. The inquest into the death was opened and adjourned today by the coroner, while the criminal process to this matter continues. Lorraine's heartbroken family have been informed and are being supported by specialist liaison officers. Five men aged between 22 and 71 were arrested on suspicion of murder, but released on bail during the investigation. A massive search for Lorraine was launched after she was reported to have been a missing person on September the 1st. She'd been out with friends drinking that day. Police were seen looking for the city for clues and divers were searching in the river near the Mill on the Eve pub last week. Lorraine's Facebook page was updated on September the 2nd to say that she had moved to Plymouth. The update was flooded with messages from worried friends urging her to get in touch, with some saying that someone had got her phone. Others expressed fear as it was revealed that she was type 1 diabetic and her medical kit had been left at home when she vanished. One friend wrote on Facebook, please get in touch. Another said, is this her online or is someone using her phone? This was really out of character for Lorraine as she was an insulin user and she really needed her medication. After the arrest and charge of Azam Magori, the story began to unravel as to what had happened to Lorraine. After convincing her to come back to his flat and taking drugs and drink, he said in court during his trial that he went into a panic when he found that she was dead on his floor. He kept her body, he said, in the stupid belief that she may come back to life. He then took control of her Facebook and sent messages to her family and friends pretending she had moved to Plymouth and wanted to start a new life. Azam stood trial at Exeter Crown Court and he denied murder of Lorraine, who was a diabetic and had died suddenly after taking drugs and drink in his flat above Bodrum Kebab House. He said, I don't know how she died and I don't know why she died. At the same time, I felt responsible because I just drunk and drunk. I didn't know she had problems. I didn't know she was a diabetic, he told the judge. Under cross-examination by the prosecutor, he said he was absolutely not responsible for her death. During a series of exchanges with Azam, he said he could not remember sending messages to her family and had blacked out after Lorraine had died. He had trouble visualising her dead body and denied changing her account to fit the evidence. The jury played CCTV footage showing Magori leaving his house at 2am on September the 1st and he walked up the high street. A few minutes later he encountered Lorraine and she had been drinking heavily with friends in the city and was alone. Prosecutions said that he knew she was a vulnerable woman and the pair had sex in an alleyway near the John Lewis store in the area. Magori made an audio recording of the incident in which he could be heard saying, I will give you free money, free alcohol and free drugs if you come to my flat. Asked why he'd made the recording, Azam said he wanted to prove if anything happened later on, if she accused him of rape. 
He said it was not unusual for him to record his meetings with people and it made him feel safe. He did not have drugs at his flat and his comments were made because he was drunk. The prosecution say that Mangori killed Lorraine soon after they arrived at the flat and the Crown cannot say how she died, but it is assumed that he smothered her or strangled her. Mangori said once at the flat the pair had sex and sometime later that morning Lorraine produced some silver foil and inhaled a drug. He joined her but then felt unwell. When he noticed that she collapsed, he tried to put perform CPR but realised she was dead. Was there anything preventing you from going to get help at this point? The prosecution asked him in court. Azam said he was concentrating on the CPR. When this failed, he blacked out. Mr. Law said there were men much older than you that was available in bedrooms on your floor and some of them were a few steps away. I want to explain why you didn't get help. So this would confirm that the other men that was arrested were more likely people that was in the shared house from the looks of things that Azam was living in. He said to the prosecution that he wanted to perform CPR correctly and he didn't want anybody else there. The defendant said that he thought he might get in trouble if he did ask anybody to attend and help him. He was asked about his actions after Lorraine died. Later that evening, he sent a Snapchat video of himself listening to music to friends in Germany. The lyrics in the background included the words, Angels deserve to die. Your life was straight back to normal, wasn't it? Said Mr. Laws. And that quotation, Angels Deserve to Die, sounds like a, a song from a band called System of a Down, which is like a heavy metal band. No, it wasn't, he said to the defendant. He admitted that Lorraine's body would have been in his room with him for some time, and he could not remember sending the message, but recognised the music that was being played. The defendant was from northern Iraq, and he said that he was raised by his stepfather and mother, and was not permitted to have any friends. He said that he was bisexual, but ran the risk of being stoned to death for his sexuality in his own country. He came into England via Turkey, Greece, Germany and France and he used contacts in the Kurdish community to get a lorry to Birmingham and worked in Nottingham before arriving in Exeter in July 2020. He had been refused asylum and feared getting the police involved after what had happened would result in his deportation. So he was actually actively searching the streets from the sounds of things quite regular to find vulnerable people while he was actually not allowed to even be in the country. He had also lived in Stoke-on-Trent at one point, later emerged in the trial that he had dismembered her body in the horrific murder and put her remains in bins near his home. The 24 year old was seen walking with a sports direct bag down the street with what they believe was her remains. It was also heard in court that Lorraine Cox actually had a girlfriend called Elsie Farrow and she gave a victim impact statement where she revealed that they wanted to have a child together. She said that Miss Cox was going to carry the baby and the murder of Lorraine is something I will never recover from. The thought of her being a missing person for so many days prolonged the agony and I will forever miss her. And when we found out on September the 9th that she was dead, all hope was lost. And this story is very familiar to a previous story that we covered last year, where two men were jailed for the murder of Julia Rawson. Very similar circumstances, she had gone out to drink with friends. Nathan Maynard Ellis had managed to convince her to come back to his flat to take drugs and drink. And this is something that you're going to be offered a lot when you go out. Some people are going to want to go back to after parties, etc, etc. But if you do, just make sure that you take a friend with you. Let people know where you're going and take these precautions. Because sadly, there is some people out there that try to take advantage of people who have addictions, issues, or are maybe not in the right state of mind. So my condolences to the family of Lorraine Cox. And I really hope that you have a good day today when you're out and get home safe to your family. I really appreciate you joining me today. Day, please don't forget to like comment share and subscribe i'll be back again very shortly with some more news peace